So, last part, let's update our score. Anytime we hit a fruit, we want to update our score. We also want to update our timer. And we definitely don't want these fruits to shoot that fast. So we're gonna, let's do the fruit shooting first, then we'll do our score, then we'll do our timer, and we will wrap this video up. All right, so where is our shoot fruit? Where's our fruit shooting from? It's shooting from our game controller, which is here. So we're gonna go inside of there, and we're going to add some things to make it shoot slower. So let's go ahead and open up our game controller. And we have just a little bit of script. This is what actually shoots it. So we need to add some time to that. So let's go ahead and say timer variables. So the first thing, I want to make a public timer that I can update in Unity. And that's way, so if I set it at two seconds to shoot every two seconds, but I want to test it and change it in Unity to be one second or half a second, I can do that. So we're going to say public, say float, and I'm going to say timer shoot next fruit. And this, again, our thing is timer to set to shoot fruit every number of seconds. And you know what? Let's go ahead and declare that. So let's just say right now it's two. So every two seconds. But remember, I can change this value in Unity. And then I'm going to need, I'm going to do a private float. I'm going to say timer fruit currently shown. And this is the time before shoot next fruit. So I'm going to save this and just show you. I go back into Unity and close some of these guys. My play game controller. See, because I made that public, I can change this from two seconds to one second, or if I wanted, half a second. It's not going to update here, because I'm saying, okay, I just want to make it two, but I can update it over there. That's why we made this public. You do not see this one, it's because it's private. You only can see it inside of the class play game controller. All right, so let's go ahead and update this. That way, we only shoot um, every whatever amount of seconds. So first thing I want to do, since I can update this value, it's not always going to be two, I want to set my timer the fruit currently shown to this maximum value. So if it's two here, I don't want it to be two, I want it to be whatever I set this in. So when I start my game, I want to update the timer the fruit currently shown to the max time to show fruit, right? And actually that is probably a better name. Max time to show. And I'm going to change this one to say timer. So that's probably a better name. Let's update this. Timer shoot next fruit. I'm going to say this is going to be max time show fruit. This one, I'm going to say timer before shoot next fruit. There we go. Kind of makes sense, right? This is going to be the max time to show any fruit. This will be the timer before the current value. And I can update this one. So up here, I want to update that. So I'm going to say timer before shoot next fruit is equal to the timer of the max time. The reason I'm doing this again, right now here it says it's two, but inside of Unity, I can change this value to be one. So when the game, when I press play, I want to make sure that this is going to say every one second sent, shoot it, all right? Once we do that, in here, we want to update our timer before shooting next fruit, right? So we're going to say timer before shoot next fruit. 
is equal to minus equals time dot delta time. Minus equals, what does that actually do? It is just shorthand. So it's saying minus whatever comes after this from me, and I'm now equal to that value. This, in essence, is the same thing as timer max time show fruit is equal to timer max time show fruit minus time dot delta time. So minus equals is the same thing as this. But working smarter and harder, we'll go ahead and delete that. So that's going to update the max timer. So the max timer right now is one second. Every second or so is going to decrease. And then what we want to do is when this time is less than zero, then we want to shoot our next fruit. So what I'm going to do here, if time shoot next fruit, if timer max time show fruit is less than zero seconds, right? How does that look if timer max time to show fruit is less than zero? We're gonna go ahead and do all this. We wanna create a new fruit. We wanna put it in the position. We wanna show, show that fruit. So let's go ahead and just cut this out. Control X, paste it inside of there. But the other thing that we wanna do is now this is less than zero, but now we're shooting a new fruit. We wanna reset this guy to whatever that value is. So down here, reset timer max time, right? Show fruit to the max time. All right, go ahead. So we're gonna reset the timer max time to show the fruit, right? I'm gonna say timer max time show fruit is equal to timer before so that is what that is but here I just noticed something timer max time to show fruit is the float that we can change what we want to actually set it is the timer before we shoot the next fruit so this down here is not the max time. We're not changing this value. Remember, this value is what we set. It's the max time we should show. This is the value we want to change. So I'm going to say timer before shoot next fruit. Now, now that we have that, I only want to shoot a fruit if the timer before I shoot the next fruit is less than zero. So shoot next fruit if timer before shoot fruit is less than zero, right? How does that look? If timer before shoot next fruit is less than zero, right? Go ahead and do that. What we want to do is we want to make our new fruit. We want to put it in the gamer position and we want to show our whole fruit. So I'm going to take that out, paste that in, and there we go. The only thing we have to do to slow down our fruit from shooting super, super fast is okay now that we've shot a new fruit this is less than zero well i want to reset this to our max time because now i made a new fruit so down here i'm gonna just reset timer before shoot next fruit so i'm gonna say timer before shoot next fruit is equal to timer the max time that we set up all right the max time that we set up. So I'm going to do save. Now this should slow down our fruit to be whatever we chose. So two seconds. So let's go ahead and test that. Let's press play. So you can see every two seconds. So let's pause this. I'm going to check something out here. Looks like our kiwi are not slicing. 
those guys hit and they did not slice. So we have an error somewhere. But you can see it is slowing down. So let's check that, right? That is in our sword. You're saying if fruit name I hit is equal, equal to kiwi. So that is not working. And then we have kiwi clone, so it should be. But let's change it to dot contains. So I wanted to show you the comparisons, but you can see now I have an error, so let's do contains. And let's go back to Unity. All right, so I just saved it. Let's so let's go back and test it now. When these are hitting, it's actually not slicing them. Earlier we thought it was working. Well, that's because of the type of collider that we chose. We chose a mesh collider, and we did not doing that mesh, and we're doing none. If I, let's take off convex. Well, let's see if it works just to show you the different types, right? So that hit, it, it did not slice it. That hit, it did not slice it. That hit, did not slice it. So that's why we're not using a mesh collider. Just for the simplicity of this, go ahead and remove that, right? If we remove it, that means on collision error would not be called. So we have to add another one. And that's why I said originally we wanted to add in our box collider. And if you kind of look at it, box collider is similar. It's just a box around this sword. If any part of it hits it, the mesh collider, what is happening is this sword is so thin and we can kind of see that, right? If we come around, that thin sliver was not registering when it hit it. But when I do a box collider, this is kind of a box around this entire thing. So that small sliver would register. So that is one of the important points I wanted to show you. Sometimes you would use a mesh collider, but for a sword, because this little blade edge is so thin, it's not registering when it actually hits. So when it doesn't register, because it hit that thing, it's not coming inside of here to do what we need to do. So let's go ahead and test it now with our box collider. And you can see these are slicing. I should just make it faster. So remember inside of Play Game, we just made it one. Let's make it 0.5. And let's see if we can get some other fruit. There we go. Here's our kiwi slicing. Our apples are slicing too, it's just they're facing the other way. You can see, boom, boom, all these are slicing. My bananas are slicing. So everything is slicing, everything is working. And now it's slower, and you can see we added in kind of a timer to speed up and show it to play our game. So last couple things we have to do is our score and our timer. Timer is probably the easy of the two, so I always like to do the hard work first. Both are pretty relatively easy. But pretty much any time we hit a fruit, we want to update the score. So that's going to be inside of our sword text. Let's go back over here, and what we need is two things. Score variables, right? Eat is a public game object to the score text object. This is a reference to the Unity object to update to the user. The other thing we're going to need is a private, say int, score. And this is going to be the score of the, so when we start off, uh, score is equal to zero, right? So I can set that there. Go ahead, back over into Unity. My sword script, so I have to click on my sword. I can get close some of these that I'm not gonna be using. My sword script now has this score text. I need a reference to this guy. So this is right there. I'll click back on my sword and I will drag this into that. That way I can update it. And now what do you have to do? Every time we hit our fruit, we want to update the score and update that. Seems pretty straightforward, but it's going to get tricky, and I'll show you why. So you would think, okay, 
anytime we hit any of these guys, right? We want to go ahead and just update the score. But we're doing all that down here. So why couldn't we just say update score? And I'm going to say score plus plus. And again, this is the same thing as score is equal to score plus one. It's the same exact thing, just a shorthand incrementing our thing. And I want to update the score text, right? That text. Ah, I called it the wrong thing. So I, there is no dot text in that. Let's just do this and then we'll update it. Score dot, dot text is equal to score colon plus our current score. And this is updating score shown to user. And the game, right? So this is saying, hey, game logic does not have something called dot text. That is correct. You got to know what type you're using. So score is not a game object, it's actually a text mesh. Now when I save that, you can see my error goes away. But because I updated it here, inside of Unity, it's going to erase the object I dragged in. So let's go back over here. You can see score text and it's empty. So I need to drag back in this and drop it there. Now you would think we're done, but there's going to be an error. So it's always good to add some code and test some code. So we go ahead and press play. Whenever I hit, look at how many, t I hit it only like four times, but look at the score. I'm trying to let it pile up so you can see. I got 158 and I only hit it like really five, six times. So what is happening? Let's play it again. Trying to, so I hit it one, two, three, four times and the score is 22. What is happening is when this hits this sword, it goes into here and it does all this and it adds one. But think about it this way. When this hits this sword, it doesn't immediately stop hitting the sword. If you thought about it in real life, it would slice this apple in half. So it's still touching that sword. So even when one thing hits, the apple hits the sword, it's touching it for longer than one second. So it's, let's say this apple hit this, the time that it took to cut this apple in half might be four or five seconds, maybe faster, six, seven. So that's why we only hit this thing. And again, if we look at it, we only hit one, two, three, four. And you can see that because all of our apples are sliced, right? These four things are sliced, but our score is 22. So pretty much what's happened, when it hit this, that same time it hits it, it's not instant. It's only not one second. It's still touching the blade, so it continues to call on collision enter. And what that does is it continues to add down here. So how do we fix it? Well, we can fix it in a couple of different ways. Um, the easiest <coughs> would be to simply update or create a tag or kind of a name for the whole object that I hit. So pretty much what is happening when I hit something, it's not instantly falling away, it's slicing through that fruit, right? Which is real life. It might be an apple, and I'm showing a sliced apple, and then it's going to delete the whole apple. But because it's still touching the sword, this is gonna get called again. The thing I sliced is now still an apple, so, the collision object now is a sliced apple that I'm currently touched before. So I'd have sliced apple here and sliced apple. 
How could we change that? What do we do? What we're going to do is name our sliced Apple object. That way, when we come to check this, if the name is not equal to, for example, sliced. So if we collide with something, if the name is sliced, that means it's a sliced instance. We already cut that. We don't want to add to the score. All right. So down here, what we could do is simply in here, I'm going to now need to make this a game object called slice. That way I can update the value of it. So I'm going to say game object sliced fruit is equal to that. And here, give sliced fruit a name so doesn't add score more than once. So I'm going to say sliced fruit dot name is equal to, let's just call it sliced. So now down here, the only time I would want to add the score is if I, if the name is not equal to slice. But if you think about it, I don't want to even do any of these. So if I slice the apple and it still touches and the collision, which is this object, is equal to slice apple, why am I calling this again? I don't want to. So I'm going to put all of this in a nested if statement. And I want to say, I want to check that the anything I collide with is not already sliced. So how do we do that? If collision dot game object dot name is not equal to sliced, which we just made down there, then I want to do all of this stuff. So let's run through this so you can make sure you understand. The only time I want to slice the object is if the name is not sliced. So let's go ahead and save this and test it now. So again, this apple touches this. It is still touching it, so it calls it like four or five, six, seven times. And it's calling that over and over and over again. But now because we call this apple slice, the name of it is sliced, the next time when it cuts it, it's going to call it four or five times, but it won't do the code because it's going to check to see that the name is not sliced. All right, so let's press play. Let's check our score out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. So we fixed that. Last part, not least, our game timer. And our game timer is going to be this timer text over here. And we're going to do that inside of our play game. All right, so play game we got here. And we have the timer max show fruit, timer this. These are timer variables. So let's just go ahead and put this here. So we're also going to have a public float timer. Let's say the play time. And let's say it's 30 seconds for right now. All right, timer for user to slice fruit. And again, we can update that because it says public. A private float And I'll just call this one timer. We'll just call it timer. And this is timer for game. All right. So again, since we can update this, I'm going to save this. Let's come back in here. 
Let's look at my play game controller. Now I have a timer play time. I could make it 25, right? I made it 25. I want to make sure my code updates to 25. So my timer here, whenever my I press start, update timer to we can change it in unity before play. All right, so I'm going to say timer is equal to timer and actually let's do it like we did the other one. Max time, right? So I'll say max play time. Max play time. There we go. So that sets it Update the timer before we shoot. Let's just keep it consistent. Same thing, commenting code. Update our timer to slice the fruit. So we're going to say timer minus equals time dot delta time. And we only want to play as long as this timer is greater than zero. So same deal, timer is greater than zero then we'll do something so play the game as long as greater than zero seconds right simple so what are we doing to play the game we are doing this here's another nested if statement so here's an if statement I can press an if statement inside of there which is shooting our fruit And if our timer is not, let's just say game timer expired, game over. All right. So play the game up there as long as there's time left or down here. So we have that. And we have these two guys. The other thing I need is a reference to this, right? Let's go ahead and do that. And that's going to be a public game object timer text. Reference to game object and unity to show user. Time left. All right. So when I save that, come back over here. You can see I need to fill that in. Let's find where this is. It's right there. So I'll click on my play game timer and I'll drag in my timer text. Oops, let's try that again. There we go. So now I can update this inside of code. So over here, I have a reference there, and we want to show what the current time is. So if the timer is greater than zero. Actually, I'm going to pull this. All of these things should only happen if the game is timer is greater than zero. So I'm going to put this also inside of here. So the only time I should update the time before I'm shooting the next fruit or my timer is if the timer is greater than zero. When I do that update, let's go ahead and update our timer text. Dot text is equal to timer. And I'll say plus timer. Update timer shown to user. Now, what was the error here? We did this before. Remember? It's not a game timer. Actually, when it's text, it is a text mesh. That gets rid of our error. So the only time we're going to update our timer is if the timer is greater than zero. But down here, the game is over, so we should show game over. So I'm going to say show user game over, right? I'll say timer text dot text is equal to game over. And there we go.
Let's go ahead and test that our timer is working and we are done. Let's press play. Ah, again, good point to debug, right? Let's look. The assets, play game controller at line 66, space 42, expected a semicolon. So one of the things that I commonly do is I get that error. And the reason is in most new programming language like Swift for Apple or Kotlin, you don't have to type these semicolons anymore. So because I'm used to coding in a newer language, I often leave that. But let's go back and fix it. So it said at line 46, what line did it say? 66, 42. So at line 66, here we go. At space 42, you can see that error right there. I'm missing a semicolon because I'm used to Swift or Kotlin, the newer languages. So I come down here, save it, it is done. Now if we test this, our score works, our timer should work, and our fruit gets sliced. Our fruit shoots at a reasonable speed that we can update so I can make it two seconds or one second or whatever. I can also update the amount of time that a timer would show. So if I wanted it to be 15 second rounds versus whatever. The other thing, remember, look here, timer text. Remember we updated that, right? I didn't drag it back in. Any time in code, if we change this from game object to timer text, you gotta make sure you go drag it back in. I'm gonna play it and you're gonna see an error because this is empty. So I'm just gonna try to update the timer. I'm just gonna stop. See this error? Variable timer text does not exist. So it's not playing. All these errors, right? Missing the variable. I'm gonna drag this back in. So make sure you pay your attention to these small details. When you change something in code, make sure you update that you've updated it in Unity, or you will find an error as well. It was working, now it's not working. Just having that one missing game object. It does not work. Why? Because when it comes in here and it's updating, it's trying to update this, but if this doesn't exist, it cannot do the rest of this stuff. Right? So now we should be good. Make sure we save that, and let's go ahead and press play. So I'm gonna put it on 10 seconds, and let's change the speed to every 0 0.25 seconds. So it's gonna shoot faster, just so you can see the score kind of go up. Let's test it, and we are gonna be done. So shooting a lot, yep, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gets to zero, game over. Let's pause it, let's kind of look around. We hit 17 things. So I see a bunch of apples. I did not hit that fruit, but it fell down. Let's go in. Uh, see there's some bananas on the floor. There's a kiwi I hit. There's some strawberries. Look like a nice little fruit salad there. All right, we didn't hit any bananas at the time, but they flew all over the place. All right, with that, we are done. We have completed Fruit Ninja. Our score works, our timer works, our sliced fruit works, our sword works. What is left in the last video for today? We are going to show you how to put this in the Oculus Go headset. Very easy to do, be able to test your app, use your controller to swipe the fruit and play your own VR Fruit Ninja. Go ahead to the next video.